they're screaming. Oh my god, it's already four after. Hey guys, welcome to FabFit Friday. Um, I really wanted to come on today and talk about a few things with you guys before I headed out to New Jersey because I do feel kind of bad that I skipped two weeks in a row. I really miss you. Um, so I have sort of a self-serving plan for today. Part one is going to be I'm going to share with you what happened when I used my knit one leg muslin that I fit my one my pull on shorts with to then cut out and sew together with the other leg to make a finished pair of shorts. Some surprising things happened and actually I shouldn't really be surprised they happened but I'm going to share that with you so if you decide to use your one leg muslin to um you know, as one of your legs to your finished shorts. I just want to show you a few things that happened. Um, then I'm going to quickly sew together a T. The reason why I'm doing that is because I'm teaching the yoga pants and T class tomorrow at Sew Jersey. And I went through my collection of T's and none of them were really sporty. I've made a bunch of T's, but they're all made out of ITY knits and things that are a little bit more, how, how should I say, fancy than just to put on with a pair of, you know, leggings essentially because I fit my yoga pants into a legging style. So I didn't want to look dressy on top and sporty on the bottom. So I have this really cozy um, sweater knit that I'm going to quickly sew together a tee. So that's what we're going to do today. And basically what I want to start with now is I'm going to stand up and I'm going to show you my um, shorts because I finished them. And if you look at the thumbnail of the, uh, you know, the thumbnail of this video, it shows them. But I just want to show them quickly so you can see. So these are my shorts. And there's some weirdness going on. So now that I've shared them with you, I'm going to take them off and I'm going to put on my regular leggings that I have so I can take put them on the table and show you. So let me just, um, let me just take the shorts off. I'll be back in one second. Second, I'm trying to put them on without taking my sneakers off. All right, here we go. Whew. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, let me share with you a couple things here. Now, I think I might have mentioned that I decided for this pair that after I tested or fit my leg using a one leg muslin and the top down center out method. Hi Ma, we welcome. Um, I decided I would then take them apart and use the leg I fit to create my finished shorts. So here's what I want to show you. I think you can see in the back. All right, let me just switch my view here. Okay, so if you look at these shorts, I'm gonna zoom in so you can see what I'm trying to share here. It's not as noticeable on screen as it is in person. Basically, what happened is 
this side is the side that I used to fit my shorts. And I have a picture on my phone, which, where's my phone? Hold on a second. Where's my charger? Was on my phone, hold on. All right, so I'm just gonna show you, I posted this picture yesterday um, on my Instagram, but I just wanna show you something here. Actually, let me just show it to you for my photos. Um, okay, so if I show you this up close, you can see, let me just zoom in here so you can see. All right, so I think you can see the little dots. I actually put dots on the top of the waistline to show where I had to trim off the extra. Now, if, if you were following along with me, I only added two inches to the top of my pattern when I made my fit muslin so I could adjust the center front and the center back from center down first. And I ended up needing almost all of it. I took off five eighths. So I actually added an inch and three eighths to my back rise. And I left the entire two inches that I added onto the front of my shorts. So basically I, for this pair, I added to my rise and then I cut apart, I cut apart the shorts. I mean, I took them apart and then I trimmed it, and then I used my adjusted pattern to cut out the other side of the leg here. And what I wanna share with you guys is once I sewed them together, the side seams and the inseams went together perfectly, but when I went to sew my crotch seam together, I don't know if you can see this, but I actually had to ease in, this is the side that I fitted, okay? I had to ease it in to the side that I hadn't been using for fitting because when I was playing with fitting my one leg muslin, it's the crotch seams really stretched out. So I thought that was kind of interesting and I steamed it and I think you can still see a little bit of the gather, you know, a little bit of where I gathered it in or eased it in to the original length of the crotch. So. I'm gonna test this and I'm gonna throw it in the wash and the dryer and see if it, you know, goes back to its original shape from being stretched out. So that's what happened with using a one leg muslin to then complete my finished shorts. So basically now, um, that's gonna, I'm gonna think about that now going forward and I'm gonna, decide, like maybe next time I work on knit pants, I won't use the leg that I'm fitting with for my finished pants if these don't you know, sort of recover and get back in shape from being in the washer and dryer. So I just wanted to point out that, you know, if you're going to use your knit one leg muslin for your, to, you know, trim it off and use it for your finished shorts, um, I will get back to you on this. Now this is a rather thin, it's almost like a t-shirt weight cotton knit, and I'm gonna just use these as pajama pants basically, um, but I am gonna be very interested to see if they go back to shape. So that's my little, my little finishing touch or my little finishing um, details on using the top down center out method to fit knit pull on pants. Okay, and so then the next thing I want to show you guys is how fast, this is going to be fun, how fast can Jennifer sew a t-shirt so she can hop in the car and drive to New Jersey? So basically that's part two of FabFit Friday today because I have some lovely gray yoga pants to wear made out of my performance sports knit, but I wanted a casual um, knit top to wear with it. That's the t-shirt pattern I'm teaching tomorrow, and I didn't have any casual knits to go with my leggings. So 
let's take a look at this. Hi, Lean, welcome. Um, we're a small group today. I also was four minutes late. I'm sorry about that. Okay, so let me just show you here. Let me just make it a little less bright. Okay, so this is my T twin set pattern. And this pattern comes with two different sleeves. One goes for the cardi, and it's a little bit more relaxed. And then there's a fitted sleeve. So I cut out two fitted sleeves, and I have those right here. And actually, before I remove the pattern, I'm not big on marking my notches. So what I like to do is, on the back of the sleeve, I am just going to indicate that by putting a wonder clip on the back side of the cap. That way, I know which is the back side of my sleeve, and I'll be all set. So I've got my sleeves all set. And then I cut out a front and back. Okay, so we have front and back here and I just thought this was kind of a fun you really can't see what I'm showing you here hold on let me just get it so it's a little bit better of a view here maybe a little bit lighter there we go all right so this is like a, a blue tie-dye sweater knit it's super soft and super cozy and I think it's gonna make a nice comfortable tea to teach in tomorrow so the first thing I am going to do is we're going to stabilize the shoulder seam. So when you're working on a T, you don't want the shoulder seams to stretch out of shape. So I'm going to be using some of my um, So Keezy Knit Stay Tape. And honestly, it's a mess. I'm going to admit it unrolled, but that's okay. We can still use it. Now you put Knit Stay Tape on your shoulders on the back shoulder seam on the wrong side. So I'm going to put the wrong side face up here like this and then I'm going to get myself two pieces of stay tape. All I have to do is find an end here. Here's an end. Hopefully I will be able to feel I think that blue side is face down here. So basically I'm just going to cut myself two pieces of this knit stay tape. So I'm going to put one here and I'm going to put one over here like this. And I'm just cutting it to match the length of my shoulder seam like that. Hi Diane, welcome. So this is how fast can Jennifer sew a tee so she can wear it teaching tomorrow at Sew Jersey. That's what I'm doing. Um, I did review the pull-on shorts using the top-down center-out method. So if you want to go back and watch that, um, that after, you can. So now I'm going to just press my stay tape to my shoulders. You know, especially when you're working with a, like a sweater knit that's, you know, it's got, it's got rib in it and it's stretchy. It's good to give the shoulders some support. So basically, I am just pressing on my stay tape like this. And now I can sew my front and back shoulders together and my side seams. This, is, this reminds me of when I do Stitches events live. I, have an, um, I do a demo in the playground that is yoga pants in 30 minutes or less. So I'm going to try to do a t-shirt in 30 minutes or less because um, I have to get on the road. So basically now I'm putting my t-shirt right sides together and I'm going to use Wonder Clips because I'm working on my serger and Wonder Clips are really your best friend when it comes to working on the serger because you can't run over, run them over and um, hurt your knife on your serger. Um, I also want to tell everybody that um, I'm teaching top-down center-out pants fitting in November in an eight-hour class that's broken into four two-hour sessions. The first class sold out on the 12th and 13th, so I've added a second class 
that's going to be on the 19th and 20th. So if anybody is interested in doing top down center out pants fitting with me in November, um, there is the second class for that and I put it in the description below the video. I also put part one of the knit pant, pull on pants fitting um, that I did on Fit Tip Tuesday two weeks ago. So I put a link to that as well if you missed the first part of that. Okay, so I'm gonna do my shoulders now. And I'm gonna use a, this is the paper backing from my shipping labels that I get printed when I ship patterns. So I'm gonna use this to make sure that the fabric feeds underneath my presser foot nicely. And I'm just gonna sew my shoulder seams. So Diane, your patterns are winging their way to you as we speak. Okay. All right, so I'm just gonna surge this shoulder seam. And then I'm gonna do this second shoulder seam just going to pull my paper off here. Okay. And then I'm going to do the second shoulder seam here. I just need a little piece of paper to get in there to make sure it doesn't do anything funny. So I'm going to lift my needles. And I'm going to scooch that right under there. Okay. All right, so the goal of the stay tape, let me just zoom in here for you so you can see. Okay, so see how I'm stitching right through that stay tape on the back shoulder? Um, that's going to support that shoulder seam and keep it from stretching out of shape. So that's why we put the stay tape on the back shoulder. Also, when I go to sew my sleeve in, I'm going to press my seam allowance down and you can see how it basically hides the stay tape from view. So if you put it on your back shoulder and then press your seam allowances to the back, then the stay tape does not show. So that's why you put it on the back shoulder and press your seam allowances towards the back. Um, hi, I'm going to say, I think it's Isha. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong, but welcome to FabFit Friday. I am doing how to sew a t-shirt um, today because I need to wear one tomorrow. <laughs> All right, so the next step is, now that I have my shoulder seams, I am just going to pin my side seams together and I'm gonna use two Wonder Clips, one at the top and one at the bottom. I wish this, I wish you could reach through my screen and feel how cozy this fabric feels. It's very soft. I got it at Fabric Mart during one of their knit sales and I bought enough so I can make my daughter Anna a tunic as well. So it's really soft and lovely and it washed up really nice. So super excited about this fabric. So again, I'm just pinning my side seams together and I'm gonna sew those. And then the next thing we're gonna do is we are going to sew our um, underarm seam on our sh our sleeves next. So basically, this is the order in which I would sew a t-shirt. All right, so I'm gonna get this right under there. Okay. Now, because I'm sewing vertically along the vertical grain line, my differential feed really does not have to be any higher than N. Hi, Melanie. Welcome. All right, so I'm just sewing up this t-shirt. Okay. 
one side seam is finished. And now I'm going to do my second side seam. Okay. Sometimes um, I've made some YouTube friends. So like sometimes I'll go watch Sarah Me. Sarah Me has So So Live and her live is on Thursdays. And I have to say, it's kind of fun to watch live sewing um, streams. And then my friend uh, Sarah Peasley has a Monday 9 a.m. live stream, and, and she's a knitter. So sometimes I'll turn hers on and listen to her live stream. All right, so now you can see here... Let me just move my serger out of the way so you can see what we've got so far here. So basically, I've got a tank top, but I just want to show you how nice and smooth the, the seams are. So you can see here, see how nice and smooth that's laying? Um, I didn't have to adjust my differential feed. So I've got my shoulder seams and I've got my side seams done. So the next step is I'm going to take my... Um, sleeves and I'm going to fold them in half and I'm going to sew my underarm seam and then we're going to set in these sleeves. I'm I'm really a fan of set in sleeves um, but if you like to flat construct your sleeves that works lovely as well. Um, you know whatever you're comfortable with but like I said when I first showed you the pieces I marked my back sleeve cap by putting a wonder clip there so I don't have to guess which one my back is because I did not mark my notches on my sleeve. So that way when I go to put them in, I'll know how to put them into the right armhole. All right, so let me just get this going here. So this is kind of fun because I'm... I'm, I'm playing with the idea of designing a non-stretch top with my bodice from the bodice draft along we did. So the last FabFit Friday I had, I showed how to extend the um, bodice into a torso. So I think maybe next week during FabFit Friday, I'll show you guys, um, you know, we'll design something. So if you guys are working on your bodices, your bodice drafts, you know, I want to have something you guys can try with it. So next week I think we'll be working on designing something with our bodice drafts. All right, so I'm going to sew my underarm seams now. nice thing about using wonder clips is that they don't fall off so like I can pin all my pieces together and then I can you know just put them to the side and then when it's time to do that piece the clips are still in place which is really nice So after this, we're going to set the sleeves in. And then here's the cool thing. I'm going to try it on. And then I'm going to finish the, um, the wrist edge with a knit band. So I need to see how much of my sleeve I have to actually uh, cut off. Because I think it might be a little bit too long to add a band onto the end of it. So what I'm going to do here is, this is how I like to set my sleeves in. Let me just see if I can make this a better angle. I think that'll be better. Okay. There we go. 
right. Yeah, I think that's a better angle for you guys to see what I'm doing. Um, all right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn my t-shirt inside out. Oh, it was inside out. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of lay it like this. So you can see the shoulder seam. Let me fold it in half this way. All right, so this is my side seam right here. Here's my armhole. Now we know that this is the back because there's my stay tape. So then I'm gonna look at my sleeves. Oh, I took off that pin. Thank God I left this one on. All right, I'm gonna turn my sleeve right side out. And I know that this is the back of my sleeve. So I need to use the other one because that's going the wrong way. So I'm gonna stick this in here now. Now here's how you set in a sleeve if you did not mark your notches and you don't feel like going back and doing it. So the first step is you're going to, let me just zoom in a little bit so you can see what I'm doing here. All right, so the first step is you're gonna match your underarm seam to your side seam. I'm gonna put a clip there. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk my cap and my armhole about four inches, one to one, and I'm gonna put a pin there. Then I'm gonna go on the other side and I'm gonna do the same thing because between your notches from underneath, that's always one to one, even if you have to gather your sleeve. Now my knit tee doesn't really have any ease in the cap, so I don't really have to worry about gathering it, but you can see like from the side seam and underarm seam to your notches here, all of that is one to one. Hi Kira, welcome. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start pinning up to my shoulder seam a little at a time on both sides. And when I get to the top on this pattern, I think it's just gonna fit in because like I said, I don't really have any ease in the cap and actually some some knit tops have negative ease which means the um, the armhole is actually bigger than the cap and you have to stretch the cap to fit that's called negative ease and some knit tops have that mine is pretty straight on though so see what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna press my shoulder seam, finger press it to the back. And I'm gonna pin it like that. Okay, and then because I have, um, because I'm using Wonder Clips and I know my they're not gonna fall out or shift around, I'm gonna go and set my second sleeve in so I can do them both at the same time. But basically, you can see here now, see how that's set in? and everything looks nice and organized. It's evenly in there. Okay, so you can see that's the whole armhole. Oh, it's okay, Kira's like, I'm sorry, I'm late. Don't worry, it's all right. I'm just glad you guys came. I was actually four minutes late starting because my audio wasn't kicking in, so I kept having to restart my, my OBS, so I was actually behind today too. Um, as soon as I finish Fab Fit Friday, I'm hopping in the car and I'm going to New Jersey because I'm teaching tomorrow. So if anybody missed it, I'm making this tea so I can wear it in class while I'm teaching my tea and yoga pants class. I already have a lot of yoga pants, but I needed a more casual uh, tea to wear with my legging style yoga pants. All right, so now I'm gonna repeat the process on the other other armhole and sleeve. I'm gonna go about four inches in this direction. Okay, and then I'm going to um, go forward. Oh, look, there's my back pin. <laughs> I thought it fell off. It's there. That marks the back of my sleeve cap. Perfect. 
And I'm just going to keep going here. So I'm going to put one more pin on this side. And then I'm going to go back to the other side and pin up a little bit higher. And then we'll finish off at the shoulder. Oh my gosh, this knit feels so soft. I think I'm going to feel like I'm teaching in my pajamas tomorrow between this nice soft knit and my performance sports knit that I'm using for the yoga pants themselves. It's going to be quite a cozy outfit. Okay, so I'm just going to pin that. And I'm just readjusting here. I had a lot of ease up at the top, so I'm just um, adjusting it a little bit here. So my armhole is slightly bigger than my cap. So I'm just spreading around that ease just a little bit here. So there's no, so it's all nice and even. Okay, so again, I'm pinning my shoulder seam to the back. And I think we're good to go. So now I'm going to be sewing both of my sleeves. Just double checking to make sure my pins are nice on my fabric here. The one downside to Wonder Clips is sometimes on the opposite side, the fabric can bunch up funny. So I'm just making sure everything is pinned nice and neat. I think it is. Yep. All right, so now let's, all right, let's serge these sleeves. Now, it really doesn't matter where you stop and start. I like to start right in front of the underarm side seam. So I'm just going to start right here. Like this. And again, I'm just making sure my knit edges are even. So I'm going to stick that in there like this. And if you notice that your needle thread is being a little aggressive, or tight, I mean, I'm just going to take my screwdriver and pull my needle threads out away from the edge of the fabric just a little bit just to let them relax, and that way the fabric can lay flat there. All right, so now we're going to sew our sleeves on. And I'm just going to work a little bit at a time here. I want to make sure my shoulder seam is facing the back so it's stuck there see it's right there I'm just making sure it's facing the back uh, Kira says I'm finally getting rid of my kidney stone Wednesday the stubborn thing resists lithos mm -hmm. so having surgery hope I get back on track soon oh I'm sending you oh I'm sending you good vibrations and prayers for a smooth procedure. I hope that works out. My husband had um, kidney stones. It was awful. I mean, they did pass naturally, but it was a lot of discomfort there, so I do feel for you. All right. All right. All right, so here's my start point. I'm gonna surge until I cut off my tail. Then I'm gonna put my knife down and I'm gonna overlap my start point by about a half an inch. Then I'm gonna lift my needles, lift my presser foot, pull everything gently off of the stitch fingers and out from under the needles, put my presser foot down and chain off. All right, one sleeve in. Let's just look at it quick. I always like to see how things worked out. Oh, 
I'm getting an A plus for matching my underarm and shoulder seam. I mean my um, underarm seam and side seam. And then see that's a very nice sleeve. Okay, so let's sew the second sleeve and then I'm going to pop this on and I'm going to see how long my, um, I'm going to see how long the sleeves are because I might want to trim a little bit off before I finish them with a knit band. Okay. Oops, got to remember to put your knife back up. So it cuts. That's the only downfall of putting your knife down when you're... And also, notice, I always say, let's sew inside the circle, right? I am not sewing inside the circle. I put it in upside down. So now I have to really make sure I'm not going to catch anything from underneath. And I did that because I wanted to go in the direction of my seam, the way my seam was facing when I started. All right, so now when I get to my shoulder, I have to make sure there's my shoulder seam. And again, I want to make sure that's facing down to the back. done. All right, so again, I'm going to cut my tail, put my knife down, overlap my start point, lift my needles up, lift my presser foot, push everything away, presser foot down, chain off. And what that does for you is, you can see, it makes a nice start-stop point. Let me just show you here. Let me make it a little bit brighter and a little bit more in focus so you can see. So see, when you stop and start, it doesn't veer off the edge and it makes a nice stop and start finish point. All right, so this is super exciting. I'm going to try this on and I'm going to show you how it looks. And then we'll decide how much I have to take off the sleeves so I have room to put um, bands at the bottom. So I'm going to switch my view, but I'm also going to, oh, you know what? I have a tank top on, so I don't even have to like leave the camera. <laughs> I'm just going to put this on. I like this. Super excited. Oh, so comfy. Let me stand up and show you how it fits. So here's my my casual tee and I think it will be really nice with my leggings it's just long enough let me show you so I have different leggings on right now but you can see that'll be a nice length to wear with my leggings during class all right so now let's take a close look at this if I'm gonna finish with a band I mean, I don't want it to be on my fingers, right? So I think I'm going to cut off, um, I think I'm going to cut off an inch and a half. And then I have, I cut on the bias these five inch strips like this. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to fold it in half. And I'm going to have like a cuff like this. So it's going to be like that on the bias. Oops, that was inside out. Hold on. So it's going to be, it's going to be like this. So I think I would like it to stop about here. So that means if I look under there, I have to cut off about an inch. Let's cut off an inch and a half. All right. So that's what I'm going to do. So let me... Let me take this here. Oh, Delta 888 says, T-shirt looks yummy, comfy, and 
beautiful too. Thank you so much. It is. I really wish I had, um, <laughs> you know, I wish I could hold it up and say, feel it, feel it, feel it. Because it is very soft. So let me just put on this back on. And let me show you how I'm going to finish this off. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to switch my view back. Let me just make it a little bit sharper. There we go. Okay, so to finish the sleeves, because a lot of times between you and me, I don't bother finishing the sleeves, but um, I want to make this, you know, a nice finished project. So I'm going to cut off. I'm going to cut off an inch and a quarter because I also need seam allowance. So basically, I am just going to lop that off inch and a quarter. I'm going to cut it off the other side too. Like this. Inch and a quarter. Okay. So now, to create my bands... What I'm going to do here, I want my band to be a very similar, um, you know, width as my wrist opening. So I am going to fold my fabric in half this way. I'm not going to worry about folding it in half. Um, you know, fold, I'm going to fold it in half when I sew it on. So it's only going to be, you know, this long. That's going to be the finished cuff size, but to cut it, I'm just going to fold it in half like this, and I am going to cut it to match that, and my seam allowance is right here, so I'm cutting it the exact width, like this, Oops. so there's one, and then I can use this one as a sort of a pattern piece to cut out my second one. So I'm just going to lay this on top here like this and cut out my second one. Like this. Alright, so now I have two bands to finish my wrist ends. And basically, this is just like finishing um, a neckline. I'm also going to finish the neckline very similarly, but basically what I'm going to do here is I'm going to fold these into a circle and I'm going to stitch them. Let me do them both at once. takes care of that little sewing job. The next step is I'm going to fold my band in half like this, right sides face out, so it's like this. And when I get to the bottom here, I'm just going to put one seam allowance going in one direction and one seam allowance going in the other direction, just so it's not bulky at the very end here. And basically... I'm just going to clip that, and then I'm just going to find, well, I don't even think I have to find anything on this because this is going to fit one to one, so I'm just going to clip it twice like this, and I'm going to set up my second one like that. You know, one word of caution, if you're working with a fabric like the one I'm working with today, a tie-dye, when you cut it out, you might want to just double check and make sure you're not going to end up with a, like, a blinker somewhere on your bust. Because some of these tie-dye prints have, like, you know, bursts of white or, you know, circle designs in the fabric. And you really want to make sure that when you're sewing your tee together that none of that ends up right on your bust. 
So I did pay attention to that when I was cutting my mine out. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, I've turned my um, shirt right side out. I'm going to take my cuff, I'm going to slide it over the, sh the sleeve end and I'm going to pin it together at the underarm seam with the seam I made in the band. And then I'm just going to pin it around. So I've got a pin there. And I'm basically just going to, you know, pin it around. So it's almost like you're getting a preview of the class I'm teaching tomorrow. Although in class tomorrow, I'm also going to show how to fit it. I didn't do any fitting today, so it's, it's not like it's the, the full-blown class. But I just wanted to, um, you know sew together a tee so I can be appropriately dressed for class tomorrow. And plus, I'm going to be super cozy. Alright, so I'm just going to clip this on. And you can see two clips. All my edges are nice. And see how it's, it matches up perfectly? Because, you know, we measured it so it matches. So I'm just going to put maybe two more clips in here and I'm just making sure all three layers of fabric are even with each other and then we're gonna sew this on now obviously I'm in a tiny circle here so I definitely have to sew inside the circle and I'm gonna show you that in a minute so let me just pin them both on so again on this sleeve I am going to Oh, look at my light and dark are matching. I didn't even try to do that. So on the cuff and the sleeve. That's kind of fun. <laughs> that was a that was a happy accident there. Okay. Also, if I wasn't in a hurry, I would sew my cuffs together on the sewing machine because then I could press my seam allowances open on the cuff and it would be a little less bulky. So like when I'm in a hurry, I didn't take the time to do that step, but if I were taking my time, I probably would have sewed these together into a circle on the sewing machine. All right, so see, nice and ready to go. Now we are going to put this on and you'll see it's really important to sew inside the circle now because look how tiny it is. I mean, any given edge is going to be very, you know, the length of the presser foot's gonna take up like the whole flat edge. That's how narrow this is. So I'm just gonna stick it in there like that. Okay, and you can see why it's important to sew inside the circle. So I'm gonna remove this first clip. And then I'm just gonna carefully go around but finishing a sleeve with a band is almost like instant gratification and I'm gonna stop and start I mean I'm gonna do my trim off this put my knife down overlap Lift up my presser foot, push everything back, chain off. All right, and you can see this makes a really nice finish. See? Okay, and let's do the next one. And then basically I am going to finish the neckline the exact same way. I cut one and a half inch strips of knit. I'm gonna put my knife back up.
What's the matter, Anna? I just moved my car. Okay. Anna has to leave before me, and apparently I parked right behind her car. Or no, I just took up the whole driveway so she can't get by. <laughs> All right. Okay, so here I'm going to trim off my tail. Put my presser, put my knife down, overlap, lift up my presser foot and needle, push everything back, chain off. And again, I do that because it makes such a nice start stop instead of just veering off the edge. All right, so look at I have beautifully finished um, sleeves. So now. Let me show you how. The last thing I have to do here is, here is my little jewel neckline. Oh, good luck, Kara. Okay, so here we have the neckline. It's a really small jewel neckline on this t-shirt. So I have a strip of bias, cut on the bias, one and three quarter inch width um, strip. The first thing I'm gonna do is fold it in half so the right sides are face out. I mean, it really doesn't matter at this point, but basically what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna cut my end so it's straight, like this. Then, I'm going to, let me turn my shirt inside out actually. I like to stretch my knit strip around the neckline to make sure I'm making the right um, length. So I don't typically recommend a specific length. I like to stretch it on as I go. So basically here's what I'm going to do. I am gonna take my strip and I am going to start right on the seam allowance of my shoulder right here. Okay. And then I'm going to stretch my knit strip around gently until I get to my opposite shoulder. And you can see what's happening over here. As you can see, it's getting shorter and shorter. So it's about an inch and a little bit shorter than the neckline is right now. Okay, so once I get to my opposite shoulder, I'm actually going to put a pin, a regular pin, where the seam is. I don't want to include the seam allowance on this side. So I've marked where the shoulder seam is over here. Then I'm going to turn it upside, or not upside down, I'm going to turn it so the back is face up now. And I'm going to continue over here on the actual stitching line. So I'm lining this pin up with the stitching line on the shoulder and I'm just going to stretch it right across the back. And when I get to the end, I'm going to stretch it right up to the seam allowance edge. So you can see here I'm including the seam allowance on this side and I'm just going to cut that to match like that. Then we're going to sew this into a circle, just like I did the band for the wrist. And actually, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go on the exact same way. So the first thing I'm going to do here is fold it together like this. And I'm just going to serge my end on, my ends together. Okay, like this. Then I'm going to fold it in half. And what I really want to do here is we want to find the quarters. So I am going to mark this end where the seam is. Then I'm going to find the halfway point. So my halfway point, oops, wait a minute. Okay, so my halfway point is right here, right? So I'm going to stick a pin there. 
Then I'm going to pin my, I'm going to put my pins together in the center like this. And I'm going to mark those quarters. So make sure these match. So I've got one here. And then I've got one here. All right, so then the next step is we want to find the quarters of our neckline. And the way we're going to do this is I am not going to put the seam at my center back. I want to line it up with the shoulder. So to find my halfway point from this shoulder, I'm going to start putting my front and back neckline together. So here's my front neckline, here's my back neckline. I'm just going to put those together. And I'm going to walk them until I find the center. Where do you think the center is going to be? It's going to be in the front, right? Because the front neckline is longer than the back. So here's my shoulder seam right here, and here's my halfway point. Then all I have to do is put though that clip together with the original shoulder seam. So where I started, the shoulder, and then I can find the halfway point there. And I can do it on the other side too. And then I'll know where to match my pins when I put the knit strip on my neckline. Like this. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay it out to show you. So you can see we have a funny, um, a funny set of pins here. We have the first one is here. A quarter way around is a little bit farther than center in the back. The next quarter rounds us to the front. The third quarter is a little bit farther towards the start, you know, a little bit farther. It's not really center. It's a little bit over to this side. Okay. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my knit strip and I'm going to line up the seam right here with this shoulder that I started with. I'm going to pin that together and I am just going to cut this. This little bit here is uneven so I'm just going to cut this so it's not hanging off like that. Alright, hold on. Alright, so then I'm going to put this seam right with this seam like this and having the seam in the band be at the shoulder is much less noticeable than centering it in the back of the neckline. Okay, so then I'm going to line up this pin with the next one. So I'm lining them up, pinning them together, and then I'll be able to sew this neckline on. And then I have a new t-shirt. When I get to my friend Eric's house, I might hem my t-shirt. Um, or I might not, we'll see. <laughs> but at least I'll have something nice to wear for tomorrow when I'm teaching. And I have to say, I really think this is going to become one of my favorite long sleeve tops for the winter because it is so cozy. Alright, so I've got this pinned. And, you know, you can check between the pins just to make sure you think you have an equal amount of ease, you know, between each set of pins. So I've got ease there, got about you know, ease there, so it's looking really good. So now we're going to just sew this together and then my tea is going to be finished. All right, so basically the next step is I am going to I'm going to start right here. I'm going to lift my, I'm starting at a shoulder seam because I want to make sure it's facing the right direction. It really doesn't matter where you start and stop on the neckline. Um, oh, Kira, I got this from Fabric Mart, fabricmartfabrics.com. They may still have it. I didn't get it that long ago. All right, so I am just going to stretch between the pins to make it match. And I'm just skimming the edge here like this. And 
And again, I'm just working between the pins, stretching the neckline to match, I'm sorry, stretching the knit strip to match my neckline. One last time, I'm going to cut the tail, put my knife down, overlap, lift up my presser foot and needle, put my presser foot down. All right, this is super exciting. I have a new t-shirt. Um, this fabric is, um, it's a soft poly, I think there's some acrylic in it and they're and honestly, I can't remember, but I want to say there's some acrylic in it because it feels very acrylic-y soft. But I'll tell you, acrylic has come a long way. Oh, all right, I'm going to just whip this off so I can show you how the neckline looks. Oh, and actually, <laughs> I'm noticing... Okay, let me... Oh, oh, I missed the neckline right here. So how am I going to fix that? I am going to get my seam ripper and I am going to just take the stitching out where I can see it's back under there. So I'm going to go right here. So I'm just going to take the stitching out right here. And I'm going to take the stitching out. I guess I'll have to go beyond my shoulder seam here. Of course it wouldn't come out perfect, but this is good. I can show you how to fix. So basically I'm breaking the serge seam. So what I'm doing is I'm cutting the needle threads and the looper threads on the ends of where I want to take out the stitching. And of course, anytime you're working with a knit, you want to be careful that you're not, um, making a hole in your knit. So I'm just being careful here and I'm just cutting my seam. And then over here on this side, I'm doing the same thing. It's easier to see on this side because it's lighter. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm just cutting through the needle thread and the loopers. Then once I do that, I should be able to tease it apart and just pull the needle threads out. I don't want to dig all these stitches out individually because that would be kind of a pain. But I can find the needle thread, which by the way, the needle thread is always the shorter tail, like when you cut it. It's going to be a short little tail. Did I get that one? So I think it's right here. So see, I can pull that out. See, watch. So I pulled out that needle thread. And now there's just one needle thread left. So I just need to find it. All right, it's not that thread. Because see how long that is? That's a looper thread. So I just have to find the actual needle thread by teasing them apart a little bit. Eventually it'll show itself. So this just requires a tiny bit of patience because if you pull the, the looper thread, it'll tighten it down. So I need to find the needle. All right, so I know it's not that thread. I think it's this thread right here. Yep, I think it's this thread right here. So I'm going to pull this thread. See, I'm just pulling it out, and now watch this. All of the looper thread just comes right off. See how cool that is? So now I can fix that little part that sort of took a vacation from being attached because I missed my neckline right here. You can see it's, it's fallen apart right there. Oh, Diane's asking me the fiber content too. 
I can't remember for sure, but I do think there's a little bit of, um, there is a little bit of um, I'm acrylic, I want to say, because it's, it's got that soft acrylic-y feel. But acrylic has come a long way in terms of, oops, what happened to my, I, I just want to see if I can, oops, not that, get out this a little bit more here. All right, so I am just going to put this back in like this. Oh, it's the T-Twin Set, um, Diane. So my T-Twin Set has a regular T in it and the crossover Cardi. Or it's not the crossover Cardi, but there's a cardigan in there too, which I'm sure you have that pattern. All right, so I'm just going to make sure I catch it this time, my neckline where I had the little hole that I made. All right, so now I'll be able to show you. All right, so I fixed that. All right, so let's see here. Yeah, that's all nice and fixed. Let me cut my tail, and then I'm going to try this on and show you how nice the neckline looks. And then I'm going to sign off. Just stick this on so you can see my neckline. Oh, I'm so excited. All right. <laughs> Diane says, Haha, I sure do. Ugh. All right. Um, all right, let me show you my neckline. Look how nice my neckline is. Okay, so that's my neckline. Here are my cuffs. Okay, so now, look at how cozy I'm going to be. I'm so excited. Ta-da! 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 All right, that's enough of that. All right, guys, I am off to put all my stuff in my car. I'm driving to New Jersey. I'm going to have a super fun time at So Jersey um, tomorrow teaching this T-shirt and my yoga pants. So everyone in the class is going to leave with a brand new outfit. It's going to be super exciting. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you missed the beginning, I did talk about my knit pull-on pants and using the one-leg muslin to then sew your full pants and how I'm not sure I might want to do that anymore based on how they come out of the wash. So I will update you to see if the stretching came out in the wash and got back in shape. Um, so check that out if you missed the beginning. And Diane says, I love it, never made this one. Well, Diane, let's go. This can be your go-to knit top. <laughs> but anyway, and if you need help fitting it, please let me know. Um, I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. I'm going to have a wonderful weekend because I'm teaching. It's my favorite thing to do. I will see you guys next week, and we're going to design a top from our bodice draft. That's what we're doing next Friday. So have a wonderful weekend and I will see you guys next week. Bye.